the, the resolution. So now we're good. There we go. That that's weird. All right, we should be back live. Are we live. Um, we should we should be back. Hopefully. Yeah. All right. So it was my fault, everyone. To blame me, just like my wife does. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, there we go. All right, so so uh, so what happened was my codec got set, my codec got set to a, a real lower resolution, but my broadcast was the same. So yeah, all right. So all right, everyone should be back oh, on shortly. Wow, okay, much better. All right, thank you. I mean, something was weird. I was like, what the frick? Hey, Curtis. All right, we're back. Okay. So awesome job there by uh, Patrick. Thank you, Canadian Ancient Gamer. Um, yeah, and sorry for the problems. As you can see, life of a streamer is never perfect. After all these years, six years, I still have these issues. All right. By the way, I started doing shorts. Some people like them. Thank you, Bones, for saying that. Uh, and check them out on YouTube and on Instagram. Uh, I'm gonna give a, give it a shot. So trying to get more younger audience in here. We're gonna make an effort. Of course, the Banner Hills by Sam Weiss. All right, Sam, what do we got here? Uh, this was I don't know, almost like a little afterthought while doing research for my Central Flanaise gas. I was trying to track the the passage of the Iridians from <laughs> the Backlunish lands to the Azure Sea. And one of the bigger things that comes is the whole start of it. There really does not appear to have been any contact between the Backlunish and the Flan. And so that raised the question of why. Especially at the place that later became the source of a lot of contact. And so really the answer is the Bramblewood Forest is in the way. It's a rather nasty place. And oh, okay. I imagine even getting around it is not going to be particularly easy. So I wrote this little thing describing crossing the Banner Hills, which is the hills between the Ket and the Bramblewood Forest and the Barrier Peaks. Ah. C coming up with an explanation of why it was so lethal and stopped the Iridian migrations for 100 years or so. So am I wrong here? The wolf, which which nomad is one of them? Backlunish and Iridian, or are they Backlunish and Flan? <laughs> okay, th that's another issue. They were originally described as mixed Backlunish Iridian bands. One, but one's more than another. It's the wolf and the tiger, right? Well, later with um, issue fifty-two, okay, and the and then later the uh, box set, they were suddenly described as pure Backlunish. Really. <laughs> Yes, and then this is later modified. Uh, I think it might be admitted somewhat in the... Uh, actually, I don't think it's admitted openly in the box set, but it's noted that, well, indeed, they do communicate with the Wolf Nomads, and the current con has a Wolf Nomad... A, the current Wolf Nomad con has a rover's wife. And so by... Uh, from the ashes, the eastern Wolf Nomads are described as Backlunish Flan. But not the Western, which makes no sense. Right. Oh, sorry. The Western, but not the Eastern. Yeah, it's, it's backwards. So how does... Uh, yeah, it's I always backwards. transpose my East and West in the okay. Plan A's. Okay. It's, 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 it's a persistent issue. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. And the thing is, like I say, that, that, to me, that's like a long-standing thing. It's like, shouldn't there have been Flan up there? But then, of course, you know, did the Flan cross the Yekka Hills and the Udgrew Forest to communicate with Ekbeer? It doesn't seem like it. Uh, Fred Whining, with his LGG stuff, put some flan in the Adafit Islands, mixing with the Backlunish there. Cool. So clearly there should be some flan up there, but for some reason, you know, when just doing the racial things in for the box set, uh, Gary decided, no, they're pure Backlunish, which I don't think makes sense. But <laughs> yes, then, then the new canon shows up and starts changing all that. So, wow. Uh, maybe Ekbeer just kept them out. 
Yeah, just... I, I just started my examination more right. of the Moonish lands. Uh, post twin cats okay. and i'll see where it goes as, as i'm looking it over and try to explain it i mean i, I can see the yucca hills and the ugru forest being kind of nasty right and, and preventing much and for that matter the lands of the tiger nomads are not the most inviting it's okay. never going to be a high population area it whoever like... whoever's living there okay and so maybe they just never went south through the hills yeah, and they're not bar- they're not like raider barbarians, right? Does anyone know that? Like they're more like they're they're more tribal well, wanderers, right? Or are they? You know, uh okay, before the tiger and wolf nomad showed up, any flan that would have been there would most likely have been related to the flan of the rovers of the barrens uh-huh. or the flan of the Berniel Forest in Blackmoor. Okay. And rovers type flan are your, your your northern um your northern Iroquois, your Cree and such Indians, your northern plains Indians, and your Blackmore Flanner, your uh, Sammy or Finns, you know, following the reindeer herds around. Right, okay. And, and neither group is, yeah, particularly going to be that aggressive rampaging south into back Lunish lands looking for plunder. Fair enough. Makes sense. Cool. Well, I appreciate the small article on that. That's good. I, I actually, like I said, I have another series. They're little one-page fillers like that, uh, going through all the steps across the Flanais, and hopefully they'll they'll come out, you know, bit by bit over the next, hopefully, two years of the Grey Grimoire. Pat 66 says, weren't they modeled after Mongols? I'm not 100% sure about that. Oh, the Tigers and Wolves are modeled after Mongols. Okay. The Rovers are more Plains Indians. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but we're not one hundred percent sure. You know. You know. Right. Uh, they're sort of modeled after them, but I wouldn't push the model too much. Okay. To to make them not part of Earth and part of Earth. The the next one, the wise woman. Yes. Yes. From from Arthur oh. and Rick Paul. Uh, this is an NPC example, the the opposite of a hedge mage. Okay. Well, so that, well, not the other. The female counterparts of the hedge mage. Got yeah. it. So, uh, not, not a Rene or anything like that. Nope. Nope. Okay. Cool. Just a a little minor village NPC. Instead of having to feel, find they feel the need to put in a big city with a cleric, ninth yeah. level wizard or whatever. Right. Okay. Diagnose Mal Augury. She gets very limited spell ability and healing ability here. Uh, so with salves and stuff. That's cool. I mean, it's I good. Good, go good. Last, please. I, I was going to throw out there that um, if in your campaign um, you have any kind of system involving non magical healing, um, for example, like gathering herbs mm-hmm. and things like that. Then the uh, head mage, which was in the previous issue, and the wise woman would be a great NPC for players to interact with should they need additional healing or should they not have a cleric or something of that nature handy. Um, the, the idea that you're, you know, not, she statted out, of course, but I always like to think of these kinds of, uh, in quotation marks, monsters or stat blocks as you don't have to confront them, right? You don't have to fight them. Uh, you can nego- negotiate and interact with them, and sometimes certain types of characters can be beneficial to you right? as a player. And I think it's really great that uh, Paul fleshed out those two as, uh, you know, both archetypes and uh, from fantasy, fantastic literature and uh, things that villages have had in the historical past. I think it's great that he fleshed this out um, and provided this. I think he did a real service by doing so. And he, he's so, and most even not. Even in the higher magic uh, settings, um, you know, you still have a low level, you know. Uh, exactly. Uh, you don't have a ninth level cleric, as Samway said, living out in the, the middle of the nowhere. Boondocks, yeah. Unless it's, uh, unless it's very specific. And realistically, uh, unless the party is going to dump out 27 cure diseases to fix a town's ill population, these are the, the local healers. Yep. And they make, they make amazing quest givers as well because uh, a party is outfitted to, you know, fight evil, heal itself, 
Um, but at the same time, hey, the crops are, the crops are <laughs> struggling for something we don't know. Is it a curse? Is it a, a plague? Um, and th these kind of characters are, are very much like the inspiration to get, hey, I need to nudge the party a direction. And um, th these have both gone into, uh, they replaced the Wokati and uh, Witch Doctor stat blocks that I've used for 5e for a while. So, they also, really I think, here. yeah, really good stuff. And I think also you've touched on something, which is um, say that there isn't a druid or cleric late nearby. These people are can be the center of a community. These people can be the, you know, it's it's as it, it's written on the tin, right? She's the wise woman, right? Uh, you can tie her in also to being the, the local midwife. Um, all kinds of, of of potential in terms of fleshing out the community. Um, I mean, and that's something we don't even think about in D and D, right? Who who's the who's the village midwife? Right. Good like, point. how does that work? Right. Um, Good there you go. There, here's an answer for you. So I need to do this. I, in my game, I have the, the, they're not wise women, but I have ancient, uh, very old women that are worship Obadiah is like in my, in my game, Obadiah is the oldest of all the, you know, the, the, the Druidic type type plan, you know, gods. And, uh, and I use from relics and rituals, they are able to, they're the only ones, are only known of two, one in the Defile Glades and one near the Doom Grinder, because why not, right, out in the Cairn Hills, and she uh, uh, can imbue characters with tattoo magic. So, without nice. healing, yeah, so I, uh, maybe I should write those up. Or maybe I should put them in my, in my no, they don't belong in Altamira, but maybe I should write them up for this upcoming, so, yeah. There you go. Yeah, man. Fritz, that's funny, Moose. Fritz, the village midwife. I don't think so. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. Maybe uh, keep the population low for. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, yeah. Or, or yeah. for all you know, Fritz, the midwife might actually increase the population. So. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, but this population gonna, of what? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have more yeah, exactly. of a, a, a bizarre seed then from there, right? Yeah. So, exactly. Uh, yeah. Um, so, all right, Les, uh, you can tell the story because I told it a little bit last week. So uh, go for oh, it. Yeah, please tell the story. Tell this yeah. story. Uh, the, just the story of how this came to be. Yes, and the and story. about it and the, what's yeah, going on. Yeah, yeah. For, first, yeah. how it came to be. Yeah. Uh, Jay approached me um, privately. Um, and, of course, in his campaign in the uh, Tangle Forest, you have these, uh, these, 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 these roses, these white roses. And this goes back to Jim Ward's Greyhawk Adventures book, where he mentions that there are flowers there that are found only in a, in a... The only other place they're found is in a corner of the Sea of Dust. Yeah. And he asked if he, if there, I, I knew of any other lore on them, and I said, no, but I can make something up. Um, and that's what this is. This That was the inspiration for this. I'd been thinking about uh, Linnea Halstreth, who appears in one of the Grey Grimoire, Greyhawk Grimoire articles in Dragon Magazine, that I cite in the uh, notes at the end, uh, the Lady Sage of Safeton, she was called, and I and it mentions that in in the article that she was a historian and uh, expert on on all things Sewell and related to the Sewell Imperium, and I was like, you know, you heard us. The the Halstreth family plays a central role in my campaign. If anyone would know about the history of why there's something Sewell in the in 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 that area, it would be her. Cool. So I had her, I created a kind of a uh, folk tale or tradition, which is largely either written off or just, you know, it's either assumed that it's completely just a fairy tale. It's Don Quixote-like. In a way, yeah. You know? Well, this is cool. I really wanted the idea that there's a character um, who predates the Imperium, who went on a quest and kept screwing up until the divine intervention aspect on the third try, right? right. So I was trying to, trying to follow those folkloric and mythic overtones and create a story. And then there's the interpretation of the story. And then there's the item itself, the rose itself, um, and Sorry. what it's it's capable of doing. And also the, I, I introduced the idea that the rose motif, anywhere you've had the Sewell, um, you'll find the rose, the rose motif. 
It's been integrated into architecture. It's been integrated into tapestries and clothing, but no one thinks anything about it because it's so ubiquitous and it's, it's just a Sewell thing, right? Where, wherever the Sewell have mixed with cultures, you find the rose where the Sewell still have pure blooded descendants. You certainly find the rose and nobody talks about what it means or even cares. Most of them don't care about what it means anymore, I'm gonna but tell for you a that, few people. Yeah. Here's a crossover in real life up in like uh, all the, all the, um, uh, chapels up there in scotland and all the yeah, templars yeah. have pictures of corn and, uh, exactly. and, <laughs> and it's like how the hell do they have that and no one cares it's like oh that's corn well they sh there was no corn in, in in europe at that time so that, that's another thing here there's roses but exactly. no one knows the story behind it yeah exactly that's the kind of thing i was thinking yeah. uh with 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 uh linea i was thinking of uh flavio biondo right who was, um, he's considered in many ways one of the founders or forerunners of modern archaeology. He was an Italian historian who divided the history of Italy into three periods, ancient, medieval, and modern, right? He was one of the first people to come up with that division. And he has two major works, one of which is an overall history of Italy, looking at all of those periods. Now, to him, modern would have been the Renaissance, right? Or the late right. Middle Ages, like 13, like 1400s. Yeah, post, so post he, plagues, yeah. So, so he's looking at that. And he's looking at, and then he also wrote a work on Rome, what was known about Rome. And he was a collector of antiquities. So people would go out and so, but as he was assembling his history, they would gather from all these ruins items for him or etch, etchings from walls or things like that, right? Yep. And that fed into the Italian Renaissance, which is why there are two great books. Uh, one of them is called The Survival of the Pagan Gods. And the other one is called... Uh, the uh, the uh, let me think. I think it's called the uh, the pagan mysteries in the Renaissance, and what they look at is how all these images saw a revival, and they became you know the, all all the Greek and Roman stuff started becoming heavily into, reintegrated into art and culture, and, but the Itali the the contemporary Italians, of course, were interpreting it through the prism of the Italian city states. Right. And their view of the their own history as Italians and as, say, Romans or or Venetians or whatever. And so you have that kind of uh, revisionist take on it. And I wanted to do something like that because I think that's something uh, Gygax plays with that a little bit where you get stories about stuff. And it turns out that there might be a little more to the stories or that the stories are a little bit different than uh, what the players actually find. And I wanted to work with something like that when you when you suggested this, because I'm like, cool, there are flowers. What do the flowers do? Yeah. What were the flowers originally? Well, if no one knows, they're going to start assigning values to what the flowers meant. And then you have the fact that these only grow where, you know, two catastrophic events took place. And the flan and the, the Sewell kind of exercised their uh, yeah. not so pleasant impulses, shall we say, no, and it's, tendencies. It's awesome. My gosh, the level of level of detail you do in referencing in here. I didn't know the house dress you uh, were in one Robert Mullins Arcane Lord Grail Grimoires 2. Did not know that. Yep. Uh, that they're in, all right, so that's really cool that they're in Dragon 241. So and of course I had to work in the Scarlet Brotherhood and uh, their take on things in the notes. Well, of course. I mean, it makes sense with them being pure soul. So, um, but I really appreciate I, I really appreciate it less. I mean, you know, when I asked for some background, I didn't expect you to do this entire story and all this and, and, and do a great article like this. It's fantastic. And, and really of course, the great it. part is when you read it, there's a there's a moment with a monkey crapping on the floor and jumping out a window, which how can you go wrong with that? <laughs> yes. So uh, really appreciate it. Um, so uh, I love the Twisted Forest and the Pomars. It's not far from where. My, my core adventure site is. I, I stayed away from it until we did a series of adventures you know, before Christmas. And I just, now now we got Laura on it, which is great on all these roses everywhere. It's a really dangerous place. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And one, one last thing I'll throw out there. Uh, Troy mentioned the, uh, and thank you, Troy, for saying that in, in chat. That's really nice of you. Uh, the sacred ancestors, uh, the sheltering ancestors, which you've also used oh, in your I campaign, love Jay, that one, yeah. and uh, the the rose. They're part of a. I've also did that piece about like the bog corpses, yeah. um, and they're all kind of my look at this kind of the prehistory, but it's also prehistory and how you know ancient history, prehistory, and how it gets woven into the fabric of the the modern day. And how we get, you may never know what the absolute truth of something is, but you know the stories about it, and you can certainly experience the effects of whatever happened. 
Um, and that's one of the things that I think is, is kind of important. And also, Jay, I want to thank you because you've definitely demonstrated how Grey Greyhawk creators, by producing this material, the stuff can be integrated into live streams. The stuff can be integrated oh into God, yeah. campaigns or games. Absolutely. And I, you know, I'm I'm grateful to you for doing so. Um, of course, I'm no humbled. Problem. Humbled. Oh, uh, less. but that, uh, so uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff now in these uh, last couple. Uh, you know, uh, the grimoires and visions and all. I've been pulling stuff from a lot of different sources yeah. because it's just such great con you guys know, all know how much i love the low road i mean i yeah, eat yeah, that up absolutely right i i mean it's i, I eat that article. stuff up uh, uh, and i did it before the article was even out i was utilizing it because i love it so much it's an integral part of my campaign and it's going to be incorporated into this a little bit too Right into the mountains near Dunyalag because uh, it just makes sense to have it. Now it won't be on as grand scale as in the Lord Mills, but you know we're going to put a version of it, um, you know, into into that in the final and publication. Just to throw something else out there that's kind of related. Uh, of course, the Badwell honey comes up in that. Yeah, I see that right article. here, and yeah, that's actually from from Gygax's Artifact of Evil. Um, there's a single reference to honey, and I was like, I, I was fascinated by that. And so there's an article in the Oyth Journal that I did about the history of Badwall's uh, honey honey and beekeeping industry um, and what, what eventually ended it and uh, perhaps the aftermath. And that's another thing that I think is, is kind of cool is you can take these little throwaway lines. It might, it, yeah. it might be linear. It might be um, the, the, the honey in, bad, in, in Badwall. And you can incorporate it. And it can become actually a central point. I mean, uh, you know, maybe someone wants one of these things for whatever purposes, or it's a family tradition, something that they've rediscovered now, and, you know, things like that. I, I, it's a way of keeping things alive. Les, I loved yeah. it uh, very much, and I hope everyone does as well. Please read the story, everyone, on that. I mean, read the whole thing. This thing is awesome. I, like I said, this stuff is so... God, do I do I ba am I going to be bashing Anna? Do you want me to bash? Should I bash Hasbro? Are you going to bash someone? Hasbro, should I bash him? No. Just <laughs> <laughs> say that this is this stuff this is, is really great. Good. How's that? How's that? Yeah. I will. So, all righty. Well, Les, you got part of this one too, along with Sam and and Math Matthew Fenn, which is Maddie, which is great. Whispers of yep. the a great serpent, the hidden empire of the serpent men. So, uh, who wants to go with this? Sam, oh, uh, Sam I'll go ahead. Um, I, I, <laughs> I was kind of surprised. I mean, I, I don't think I did that much. But Mateus was asking a bunch of questions because he's got his campaign going in um, in the Amedio, and he had some other ideas. And I just pointed him to some more information about the Amedio, pointed out a couple of implications of the uh, the masquerade that was going on. And he just ran with this really great idea. He wants... He likes his serpent men. His uh, absolutely. Poet, his how how are in serpent men? And he replaces the wand tea with them. And ha. Huh. And he he does more than replace the wand tea with them. He he replaces the Scarlet Brotherhood with them. Really? See yeah. that I can get behind. They infiltrate and... the Scarlet Brotherhood and subvert it from within. Yeah. Really? And so if, if you want a really deep subversion campaign, this is going to be the article for you. If, I think, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It, the, uh, the thing that I had suggested to him, too, I think this was the, the only things that I, I really did was I, I went over it and I made some suggestions on the stat blocks and... To be honest, I haven't looked at the stat blocks recently, but yeah, there were some things in the stat blocks I thought I thought should be changed. Um, but there was also, um, or just suggestions, you know, ways to tweak the stat blocks. But one of the things that I pointed out was, and Samuel appreciate this, I think, that in a lot of uh, Howard's uh, stories, you have these cults, right? You have these worshippers of, you know, Yakala or whatever. Um, there's always some kind of weird cult going on, and it turns out the priest is not really a priest. The priest is a wizard who's conning everybody into following him, right? So I was proposing, what if these serpents, everyone thinks they're worshipping the Sewell gods, everything's... No, it's all illusions, man. Right. It's right. all illusions and trickery, 
And so the, 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 they're, they're actually powerful mad mages and illusionists manipulating everybody. It's and like, they happen to be serpent folk who can shapeshift into people they ate. It sounds like Tulsa Doom a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's where, I mean, obviously that's the Conan movie. I think it's a and great, it's, awesome story. Yeah. It's very much inspired by, like, uh, in Robert E. Howard's Cull stories, you have the serpent folk, and then later um, in the comics and the movie and uh, the cartoon, they inter- integrated that into the uh, Conan mythos. And you get hints of it old in the Conan mythos. And, yep. and you get a lot of that stuff. Yeah, and I, and I think it's very much suited to old school plus... Um, Plus, if if you want to do a, a a fifth edition take that has some some kind of old school elements that you want to introduce, and that appendix and flavor, this is a great take. I think. Um, yeah. It's not. It's. It may not be by the books Greyhawk, but it doesn't have to be, and it's really cool, and it has that pulp flavor Look, that so much stuff misses. We all, all of us, can raise our hands on stuff that's goofy in our Greyhawk. I got freaking Murlocs in my Greyhawk, right? Yeah. So uh, everyone's got something a little weird in Greyhawk, and that's part of the fun and charm of it. Since you, you know, when you're a kid, who didn't fight a- against, uh, you know, uh, King Arthur out of the Deities Together yeah, exactly. book and the Knights of the Round Table? We all did that, exactly. right? So you know, we all we all did sorts of crazy, goofy stuff. It's it, it's okay. It really is. It's okay. And I and I want to give again a tip of the hat to Matthew to Matthias. Mm-hmm. Because this was just such, such a great it's idea. A cool pick. It was a great idea for him to just say, you know, this. Uh, I don't care. This is what I want to do in my Greyhawk, and then to share it, want to share it with people, and also to be open to suggestions. Like I said, he deserves. Um, I think he deserves full credit. We just Sam, Sam, you and I were just kind of making suggestions. Yeah, yeah. Like um, it, it was some suggestions to smooth a few edges. But, yeah, that's okay. But, but the core of this is all Mateus. Or, or to add, for me, there was that always that great moment. Oh, we think we're going to have to go up against a god. Wait, you mean this is all a trick? Everything is a trick. The humans are snakes, and the god is doesn't exist. Um, yeah, I love that kind of twist. And I was like, you know, lean into it, man. Don't avoid it. Don't try to tie it to any canonical gods. Just go crazy with it. Yeah, yeah. It's. it's I, I think it just came out so wonderfully. Even as he was developing it, you know, and asking for input, I'm like, yeah, I, yeah, I gave you a few ideas, and I don't think there's anything else I really have to add, you know. It's, you know, I don't want to write it the way I would do it. It's not my idea. It's your idea, and your idea is perfect. Exactly. <laughs> so a question, um, are all the Scarlet Brotherhood dead, or there's, or are they still around in this version? Like, they just never really existed. Oh, they never really existed. Well, I like it. Yeah, even more and there, there are there are people who think that they ser- they might be serving the Scarlet Brotherhood, but they're actually serving this cult. Yeah, okay. it was a thousand years ago, as, as it was setting up after the twin, twin cataclysms, the serpent men were just like, "Oh yeah, this uh, this is perfect for our needs. Thank you." Okay, and they just infiltrated and took over, and nobody realized it. Um. Okay. That's and cool. so it turns out there is a Scarlet Brotherhood. There is a sort of, you know, remnant of the Scarlet Brotherhood. It's just that the Scarlet Brotherhood isn't what it thinks it is. Oh. It's being manipulated from within by a secret, secretive snake cabal. There is nothing at all wrong with any of that. I like it all, which is really fantastic. Very nice I mean, have, job. I mean, have you ever seen the father? I mean, you don't know what he's like, man. <laughs> and then it turns out it's Thulsa Doom. From the Conan movie, right? Yeah. It's James Earl Jones. <laughs> um, so yeah, I kind of dug that. And idea. he has a black mask on. He breathes through it. Oh, I'm sorry. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. Or or some kind of mask, right? All right. Trivia question. I you have ten seconds after I answer. I ask this. The winner of this will be able to assign a special hero point to whoever they want tomorrow, even me. Okay. Darth Vader appears in what published source adventure? Wow, I don't even know that. <laughs> I didn't say it was Greyhawk. But is it D&D? Yes. Okay. He's called DV in it. DV. Wow! Boom! Now, Alan Crowley would have gotten it if he was here. DV. 
No, the twofold talisman. In, in Dragon Magazine. Look it up. Oh, nice. TV. Oh. Yes. It, it, there's even a picture of him in the magazine. Yep. All right. No one got it. Yes. DV. It's pretty funny. It's, it's you know, that's the one of the, eye, uh, the monks wearing eyes on preppy shirts and stuff. And all, <laughs> yeah. mess, uh, the orcs got messed with the best. I like the rest jackets, uh, leather jackets on. Yeah. So, okay. No one got it. All right. Detect Life, the Ngundi. Uh, Nijenko, uh, is this the first article he's done? Yeah, I believe so. Wow. Good yeah. for him. Yep. So uh, give me some background, someone, on this. What is this, the Ngundi? I, I've heard that before, but, yeah, that's a, that's a race, isn't it? They are an otherwise obscure monster yeah. that first shows up in the Greyhawk Adventures hardback and later Monsters Compendium 5 uh, Greyhawk Appendix. They are iguana people with illusion power that ambush people and eat them. Okay. You may notice a recurring motif of reptiles and consumption. In yeah, there's a lot of that in here. It's just <laughs> yeah. cool. Yep. And, so. uh, oh, psionics, too. Yeah, he, yep. sort of, he, he rewrote them, making them psionic-based. Okay. And... Wow. It's... Feels very 2 well, yeah, It's pretty much, uh, an, you know, uh, an ecology article. With like with the little variant rules, which he he very nicely provides uh variants for zero one two three uh e you know all so you can you know pick whichever one you like and that's it he, it's it's not massive it's not a deep thing but it is it really examines them a creature with that, that operates in a different way well. It's always cool to get a little bit of a different, make them a little more powerful than they are in the uh, Monster Manual. I find I'm doing that a lot more. I'm bumping up hit die on things and all. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, and that's the thing. And uh, we can talk about that another time on, uh, you know, a challenge. Rating. I just, you another have thing to. I want to I yeah. throw out here is great illustration there and great illustrations throughout this issue. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's um, fantastic. So, yeah, kudos Huge to the artists. I appreciate it. Everyone's in. All right, Troy, Scourge of the Seas. Bam. Yep. It's a scourge of the sea. <laughs> no, it's a it's a paladin oath. Oath uh, of the Scourge of the Seas. Oh. For fifth edition. You feeling okay, right in fifth? I'm just kidding, man. I'm, it's awesome. So it's a paladin oath. Okay. So uh, what deity is... Um, are they behind here? Any? Norbo, Osprum, or just just the sea itself? Oh, they serve Panzurial. Pen oh my gosh, the Kraken. Yeah. So they're not lawful. They're not. Uh, they're not an old school paladin. <laughs> These sets are more no. like, no, no, like no. anti paladins. Correct. Okay. There's there's three of the oaths that I made. So this is one of them. James. You can take the whip away from Troy, but he'll still keep cracking. So <laughs> well, he's whipping he's whipping Josh right now, so that's funny. All right, so tenants of the scourge of the sea. So um if they were out not if they were not water based and they were more weather storm based, they'd more be like almost Talos from Forgotten Realms. That level? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I have the Storm Lord in, uh, so, uh, in mind, so uh, I converted over. All right. That sounds pretty nasty. It's Panzorial. Okay, it's a demon. It's a demon. Kraken. Okay. Ugh. That's disgusting, dude. Tidal Wave. That only at ninth level? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, we, we, I, I played that, uh, play tested that, and uh, it's. It's pretty much on the it's on curve for all the 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 five e paladin oaths. Okay. So, okay. Um, I believe it, it. It can hit pretty hard, but so could all the paladins, which is a lot yeah. of fun. So. Well, very nice job. Um, Troy always brings a hell of a lot of flavor to whatever he does. Yeah, so I'll say. I just want, 
Absolutely. Unyielding cruelty. Show no mercy to those who fall before you. The squid yes. shows its prey as it crushes and eats it alive. Yes. <laughs> crush your enemies to crack, to crack them open and chase the entrails. Yeah. I, I will say this. Troy is very evocative. <laughs> that's making me... That's, that's, a, that's a word for it. Some would say trouble. Oh, that, that is funny. And, and just just remember that whenever you order fried calamari. Yes. Uh, oh, fried calamari. So. Exactly. Yaha, the sea beast hunter of scant by Jarl Thor. Okay. First time entrance? Uh, yes. yes. Wow. This is a, basically, this is a rose gallery entry. Yeah, uh, yep. An NPC for your campaign. Nice. Ninth level human male ranger. Oh, he does some other water action, too, it looks like. Yep. So, all right. And one of the things I like about this, um, and I commented on this when we were going over the article, is that it has a very kind of, uh, you know how there's that idea of Bruce Wayne loses his parents and goes on the whole uh, cowardly, you know, when, he, when criminals are a cowardly and superstitious lot, I shall become a bat. Um, one of the cool things about Jarl's character there is the idea that there's this loss, this tragic loss in his back, and his goal is to keep the seas, to protect those who travel, right, as a result of what happened to him when he was young. So he has that kind of mission that you would expect from a heroic figure. But he also, because he's almost lost his crew, he realizes he has to temper the obsession of his mission with consideration for the lives of those under him who are dedicated to him and will follow him. And what if he leads them to their deaths needlessly, right? They all die without accomplishing a certain thing. So now he's learned, he's tempered his obsession for justice and vengeance and protection of others with a sense of obligation to those under him, which I think is a great combination for a uh, NPC. I'm looking here. Oh, he's got studded leather. I was wondering how he went underwater with a uh, with heavy armor. He's not wearing heavy armor, so cool. All right, well that's that's a neat character. Yeah, definitely. Um, Captain the Cog they're, Centaur they're... and a hunted, hunted sea monster. Double. The... So he's a water based ranger, basically. He's a ship based ranger, which is a neat a neat concept. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome job. The Earldom of Chol by Eric Bailey. New? First time? Uh, yes. Wow. Yeah, we, we really just piled on the new people. <laughs> um, That's good. Which we're very happy. We, we want more people uh, participating. We want, you know, let, get some stuff out there. Let people get their stuff out there and uh, expand the community. Nice. We're, so I'm looking where Chol is. South Province. Okay. Northern yes. Edge. Fellwood. Okay. Got it. So that's an Anna's terri old territory. Not far from Earl Devon, right? Yeah, we'll see if I can. I'm not sure I put it on the map yet. It was talk about it, but it's on the list of me to have to put it on the map. Don't, yep. de don't mm -hmm. destroy it, Anna. I'm just kidding. Oh, you mean destroy the map or, or no, destroy the, the, the show? <laughs> <The chul. laughs> I'm just kidding. I might destroy the map by putting show there. <laughs> nice. Nice one. Uh, you got a gray off of Rearwood there, so you got some. You got someone from. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. There you go. That's cool. But there's 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 some some place some there's some room there for more stuff definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Bless yeah. the bountiful fishing realm, more bearing fertile fields, chill, corn bread. All right, cool. Yeah, we, it is yet again. We have another community here: lizards and communities, places to uh, base right. your operations. Uh, and it's not only did we get a community, we got a snake cult built in. How yep. convenient is that? I know, I know. It's like, wait, it's a little too convenient, don't you think? Maybe. Yeah. Huh. I blame the reptilians and the conspiracy, but there you go. Well, it's but, a, yeah. No, I blame the. I blame them right here. Just like Michael Baton was here. <laughs> I blame the there church of Zilchis because all they care about is the money and they're not paying attention to anything else. So there you go. <laughs> That's who I blame. I blame certain the Zilch's priests. Just when there you, you thought that, just when you thought this was over, Gods of the Backloonish, Rob Conley. Now I remember that name. 
I think. And yes, uh, Sam, if I'm not mistaken, isn't he the uh, gentleman who runs Bat in the Attic Games? I don't keep track of it. I lost track of a lot of stuff. I think so. And uh, uh, so... published his uh, Black Marsh setting, which uh, yeah. is is very very great. He uh, also the majestic fantasy role playing game. Um, he's he's a great cool figure for great cool cat for OSR stuff. If you're interested, I suggest looking him up on Drive Through, or looking at his blog Bat in the Attic. So, um, great material there. So what's cool is he discusses deities that uh, the gods uh, Beckluners are going to use. So you got you got Istis. You definitely have Zuokan. Because remember, Zuokan got it depends on you know Zuokan got freed in, in Expedition of Ruins of Greyhawk if you played it right. So because uh, right. he was in the God Trap, um, but then again that didn't have to be the case uh, uh, for you. And Zanye, you just die, uh, and then you got the Tiger and Wolf Nomads, uh, and they're just. He's talking about that, and uh, cool. So he's got yeah. four four here. Yeah, actually, he we have some more from him. Right. And he's going to address uh, other regions, and actually we're hoping for more on Chull from uh, Eric. Oh, good, good. So, yeah, so that, that's another thing. A lot of these... Expand uh, on them. Even though they're just, you know, it's like, oh, first time he's appeared, yes, and probably not the last. Alderaan confirmed he did the Blackmore setting. There you go. Good job. Yep. yep. Thank you. It's good to good to see you, too. All right. Rogues Gallery Aralon. Uh, Curtis. Didn't know yes, you. indeed. There you go. Yes, we we hunted him down and made him give up the white claws for a moment. <laughs> and yeah. he gave us an NPC. That's excellent. Yes, point, indeed. All the point break. Yeah. All right. So. And I yeah. I was going to say one of the things that's great about this. I love I've always loved Rogue's Gallery characters. And what I love about this character, you know, before we've had the a good Captain Ahab with elements of that kind of Batman protector figure and his crew. Um here um and I love the way that Curtis has this. You'll notice that there's this little thing where the character um this character similarly has a a a sense of uh something in his past. And you'll notice in that uh, last paragraph on the page where it describes how um, he makes gifts to temples that provide for uh, children, or, or particularly orphans, of humanoid attacks. But he also does this wood carving. He has this habit with, of, ma of making animal totems and giving them to children. And it looks like and, he's functioning in, in Geoff a little bit with the dim forest area. Yeah, yeah and so. uh, of course... Uh, he also visits, uh, as you'll notice, uh, has connections to Alan Claiborne okay. from or Orlane from the uh, okay. Against the Cult of the Reptile God. Nice. And uh, like I said, I love and one of the things I love about these hey, particular right. this, this particular set of rogues in here is, like I said, I love it when these NPCs have some little thing that makes them stand out. Right? It could be the scar tissue on Jarl's character. It could be the uh, and then his reaction and how he feels about his men and about the sea. It could be the the, the habit that Erlon has of just doing some crafting. Um, you know, you've come across him and he's just casually sitting there carving this, these animals. I mean, I love little bits of flavor like that. So uh, yeah, yeah, there's some great yeah, character uh, more, character more quirks, great stuff. absolutely. And character quirks that aren't just quirks; they aren't just there for the sake of it. They they reveal. Uh, upon exploration, they reveal layers about the character. That's awesome. Right? Character is like a, like peeling away the layers and discovering what makes them tick. So, yeah, great work on that, Curtis, and great work, Jarl. The Grey Grimoire, our flagship publication of the Grey Guildhall community, dedicated to all things Greyhawk. The magazine contains a trove of new content for Greyhawk. It sure does. Great job, everyone. Yep. And Definitely. I'm going to immediately go to the Ocean's Bounty, as I know we've we spent an hour and 20 on my, my video issues. Of course, Curse. All right, Troy. The Ocean's Bounty. Tell us a little bit about what we have. Oh, here. boy. Well, first of all, I just want to thank everybody that was part of this project. And that'd be uh, myself, Sam McGurin, and Les uh, helped me write it. Uh, editing... Les again and Paul Artharn the cleric, Dristeka, uh, interior art, 
uh, mostly Dan Smith with a couple other Fiverr artists in Danny Seek, Mox, and Wolfman. And then my cover illustrator is my uh, Fiverr artist, uh, Farva. Yeah, it's great work. Yep. Wow. Uh, the City was done by Penanegra, another Fiverr artist that I have. He specializes in, in cities. Uh, and the uh, inputs from the Cannon Fire community. And then Playtesters was Oblivion Seeker yep. and his team. And uh, Savage Baron, Lee. <laughs> and they both have very Perfect interesting tales. stories to tell. Good. So I'll let Here's them take over. Tears. There's a lot of tears. So this uh, is an adventure, a... right? This is an adventure, not a source book. It's a full-on module, man. Okay, got yep. it. All right, there you go. Go for and it. I just, I just want to say to begin with that my players, God bless them. Are we not practicing? Um, <laughs> used a, and I mean that uh, th th it was wonderful. One of them, during a particular incident, decided to use a spell that triggered a reaction that led to an almost total party kill and the rest of the party becoming drugged out members of a cannibal crew. I'll just say that. Wow. Um, so, yeah, there are some pretty high stakes if you don't play the mar play the module. Uh, how can I put it? If you, if you act impulsively, uh, consequences will snowball. Um, it, and I love that. It, it is 5th edition, but it is difficult. Yeah. And uh, there, there's a particular NPC in there that that, that messed them up, <laughs> uh, who was one of my suggestions. I think uh, yep. Troy uh, Troy was kind enough to. There was an NPC I had suggested as a potential uh, stumbling block to the PCs, and uh, lo and behold, yeah, my 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 players definitely uh, f fell. Actually, that a couple of them were were serving him. So what what I did was I talked to my players and I was like, okay, gang, um, we're gonna go back and we're gonna rewind just a little bit. And if you want, we can because they were all excited. They loved it. They even loved being eaten, some of them, and mutilated <laughs> and turned into cannibals. The rest of them. Um, so it was like, okay, um, you're gonna uh, since that happened. Let's pretend it didn't. Let's rewind a little bit, pick up, and you know what you you know what you did. Um, let's pretend you didn't do it and see what happens. And they effectively managed to to finish the adventure, but the adventure was this apocalyptic, um, wonderful. It could have been the end of a Conan the Barbarian comic book from the 1980s, like particularly Savage Sword with stuff in flames and all kinds of chaos. But they solved it and. Uh, Again, props. They had a hell of a time with it. They really enjoyed it and are looking forward to playtesting more of Troy's material. Uh, they were so excited, Troy. Thank you so much for allowing us to playtest that. So, Troy, is Solward the one that's the outpost that's near um, the Vast Swamp? Which one am I thinking of? No, that's that's in uh, the Sea Barons. That's Sea Barons. Okay. No. This is We're further east. Solward. This is further east. Yeah, this. Okay. Yep. Okay. Wow. This is along the east, the coast. You don't play play on. That's why. Or you. <laughs> is this south of the uh, uh, the feast, the fiends place, like south south of that, right? A little bit. Yeah, you got the sea barons, then the lordship of the isles, and then the Lindor Isles. So Asperd right? Isle is one of the lordship of the isles. No, no. Asperdy is sea barons. Got it. Then Lindor. Then the Duxchin Island, which includes Solward, it's on one of the islands. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's across from, um, Dullstrand. Dullstrand. Got it. Okay. All right. I'm just right. picturing it in my head because I'm. Yeah. <clears throat> no, Solward's way of east of that. Cold, cold, way east. Yeah. It's, it it. Is. Cool. It is almost due east of uh, Dullstrand. Dullstrand. Okay. Now, got it. All right. Very cool. So the whole area of Solward is mapped out, which is fantastic. Uh, great NPCs, great potential for player interactions. Um, yeah, I, I just can't say enough good things about it. It's and really this is level three, right? Yeah. Yes. And you'll need a, and it's got pre-gen characters in it in the back too. Yep. With good backstories. 
the, yeah, the great thing is the backstories tie them. They have reason for getting involved in the adventure, and some of them have competing points of view or um, motivations. So there's a, it's a dense, it's complexly. It's not just hey, we met in a tavern, let's go raid something. Okay. Uh, they have reasons, and there might be the potential for conflict. Um, and that's great. Is Tour of Combi and Grail Adventures. Yes, that's where I okay got it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And this is part one of a series. Part two is the Jungle of Lost Ships. Oh, one of my favorites. And Good part job. three is Tour of Combi. Got it. Okay. And there are elements in this first part that will tie over into the Jungle of Lost Ships, which is part two of this. What part. level will those two be? Uh, higher than three. Okay, so three, five, seven, or something like that? Probably, yeah. Okay. There's a, and I do want to say too, when I mentioned good NPCs, Troy, there is a certain NPC who the players can meet later in the adventure who they may not necessarily see, but they hear. You know oh, who geez. I'm talking about. And God, my players love that NPC. So yeah, that was that was great. All right, and, the, and 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 the NPCs friends. I'll put it that way. Troy let me uh, read it uh, late on later on. You know when it was pretty much finished, and he wanted, but he wanted a little bit of feedback on some of the NPCs and such. And everything I read, all it made me want to do was read the, the other next two parts. You know, just just that those bits of background, those hints for the future. It's like. Nice. I need to know how this story ends. So, what you're saying is is that Troy is good at foreshadowing and Easter egging in this adventure for the future, which is really a good thing. A lot of DMs don't know how to do, and that's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> it is absolutely a story you want to read the next part of. Cool. And play the next part of. Importantly, yeah. And run. I mean. Yep. I'll say that also about his um, Arm of Qualish. Same thing. Re reading through it, it's like, I want to know what they're doing next. <laughs> the Jackdaw Draw, the Jackdaw Tavern. Cool name. The Jackdaw is a bird. Yep. Seabird. You just, you just educated me. I had no idea. I could tell by the way you said it, so that's why I mentioned this. <laughs> Thank you. Luckily, we do know what a tavern is. But, yeah, I know what a tavern um, is. Oh, oh, and I gotta say, one of the one of, one of my pleasant, one of my most, one of my favorite experiences of DMing in the last year or so was sitting down with Lee and comparing notes on how our parties handled stuff. Yeah, oh, that's cool. So, Lee, why don't yeah, you speak I, to that? Yeah, please do. A, a chance to uh, go through and basically. Uh, run the the adventure at the same time that Les's party was my party didn't struggle as much um we also didn't uh we actually tackled it with the pregens and uh without them uh the fifth level party actually did not breeze through it um but uh there there was a uh they were able to see past one of the npcs that Les's group made a very large dis uh, we'll yeah. a mistake about. Yeah. Um, they identified the right creature type is all I could say. And okay. that helped us through it. Um, and I've had the, the chance to run it. I've ran it three times. I've yet to play it. Um, I think at this point, probably not going to get that chance. But um, I I would tell everybody, first off, it's it's four to eight hours, maybe four to ten if you want to play it out. Yes, There's so definitely. much in here that uh, it's 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 one of those that I would recommend read it, take out whatever you want to to run. Uh, even if you're having a couple of encounters, every encounter is well thought out. Um, it all meshes together, but but at the same time, if you're in a a, a port city or you have a, a party out at sea. There is something for you guys to to use as a DM. For players, uh, don't read it. Let the DM surprise you with it. Is is all I can say. Definitely. So that's the one observation I was going to make, and it's not a negative. Is that I'm looking at this and I'm like, man, this is at least two, maybe three live stream sessions. 
Which is nothing wrong with that at all. I just, I think, uh, I think it's more like, uh, for me, I think it's six to 12. But that's me running it and uh, comparted. I could probably put so much stuff on the table at the time, right? So, uh, but yeah, I mean, that, that's nothing wrong with that. Everyone loves a long adventure. All right, who did, is this, is this your artist? Uh, tr this is unbelievable, that, that artwork. That is Mox. Oh, Mox, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's the the Jack doll was done by Danny Seek and right, okay, that yeah. one. Yeah. Farva just did the cover. cover. She did the cover. Got it. And all the black and white line art in there. That's all Dan Smith. Dan Smith, that's fantastic. That's... And I, I, Go ahead. I just, I, I was just gonna say again, Lee. It was so much fun going over, and I thank Troy for this opportunity. I think this was this, that was the first time you and I really spoke at any great length. I think it was, was yeah. Was was going over the, the 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 misery and joy that our players got to experience. Because <laughs> um, my like I said, my players they're they're such good sports, and yeah, they they didn't mind that things went south for them in the first t session, and they bounced back nicely in the second. Um, and yeah, the, that final battle. Whew, if if things go a certain way, and there is a final battle sequence oh man it's it's a challenging fight it's a good fight and it, it and your players if your players are um smart smart Tac yeah tactical tactical Ta definitely tactical yeah Th then it then it, it'll be it, then yeah i mean this is a great adventure for that 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 for play i i can't recommend it enough captain cutter stitch <laughs> yep <laughs> Start scrolling fast now, Jay, in case anybody does get the opportunity to play it. Um, yeah, oh, look at that! Captain, look at that art. Scroll faster. Um, Captain Cutter that, Stitch is uh, something that, uh, yeah, I'm I'm kind of responsible for, alas. Um, your fault. Yeah, I'll take I'll take full blame for Captain Cutter Stitch. If any play, if any DMs run this and cap and people are like, oh God, I hated that guy. Blame me. So. <laughs> All right. Well, I won't. Uh, I won't give away any of the stuff in here. So, note that it's uh, it's pretty cool. It's really cool, and, and it's free for download. It's free for right download, now, everyone. So get the, get that great 90, on goodness. Ninety two pages, and I think some of us are lucky to have it in hard copy. <laughs> yep. Nah, 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 nah. Awesome. So uh, I, I'm trying to get to the pregens here. Oh, that's the guy who sends you, right? Marcus Lattimore? No, that's one of the pregens. Oh, that's a pregen. All right. You have it in Eli front. Elias Loudon is okay. the guy who sends you okay. on this yeah. okay. mission in Soulward. Got it. But that's that's one of the pregens right there. Fighter third, cleric third. Monk third. You do? Oh, yeah, there are deities in here, too. And, like, yeah, cord. Monk third. Dwarf rogue. Clangadin. Cool. <laughs> Wood elf druid. And it's a druid that's Circle of the Sea, which is one of my druid circles that I created. It was right. published in one of the earlier... Uh, Visions of Greyhawk zines. Awesome. Yep, and we got to play test it, and I got to say, it's a sound, sound. If it's a set, mechanically sound class, people. It's how many? Great, uh, great how stuff. many characters do you recommend this for? Six. Yes. Yes. You need. You need all six. You need all six. Okay. In my opinion, right. <laughs> uh, a fifth a fifth level party with four was challenged. Okay. Yeah. Uh, by this, so. So I guess kind of keep that in mind that it can it can very much with very little tweaks go up two levels, uh, if you're running a smaller group. You know, you got all the pictures in the back, which is a great thing for re reference resources for the DM, which is awesome. That's one of the things I loved about the Paizo Hawk era, which when they did this, all so, the maps and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's great. Um, and I'll yeah. toss out with the the actual sizes of the maps. They should convert very easily for virtual tabletop. Tabletop, for, yep. Um, for for use online, which uh, is kind of a really cool uh, cool opportunity for for people to use them. So. Definitely, streaming and everything else would be great. 
Do you uh the anyone... module the module looks as beautiful as it is because of that man right there. Yep. Savage Baron. Yeah. Yep, Lee. Again, you you're 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 don't yeah. ever don't ever sell yourself short, my friend. You make us all look sexier than we ever could be. So I don't know. If Troy turns uh if Troy turns uh, a light on in front of him, we'll get to see his beautiful mug and uh, <laughs> uh, that's, we, that's, we that's won't true. Need to he, do that. he has this spirit envy. Yeah, I know. Him, between him and uh Sam, I feel completely inadequate. Well, yeah. let's let's be honest. Um Stephen Chenault, you know, I, I, with the exception of what was wrong with this la the layer on this, he said it was different. Uh, it was it was set up for uh, I set it up for the 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 at home printer as in my printers at work, right? Um, and we use we use a different uh cut set than they do, um, it, which, yeah. So like, I had people. When they saw this copy, as opposed to the black and white that was given out to everyone from there, they're like, "Can you give me one of these?" I'm like, "No, I can't. I only have eleven of them." And you know, I was signing them. Ed Greenwood, my good friend Todd Stashwick, got one, so I had to say that. Um, you know, uh, a lot, a lot of people. Uh, Chuck, I gave Chuck ones. You know, uh, just I had to give them out to. To uh, where else can they find that, Jay? Where else In can color. they find that? I have no idea. Um, actually, I do. I'm just being a smart ass. So if you want to be, you want to find my Altamira and you didn't get it uh, at, at at Gary Con, and you want to download the PDF for free, you just go to Cannibal Publishing. Uh, let me link it here. Up oh, there, Savage already did Adventure Modules, and it is right here. You got Armor Crawley's Ocean's Bounty and the Free City of Altamira teaser all right here. All right. Oh. One last word I want to say about Troy's adventures, Armor Please. Polish and Ocean's Bounty. And Troy, I give you credit for this because this is something that I love. And I think sometimes 5th edition adventures, more often than not, tend to overlook this. A lot of times with 5th edition, you have people who are playing their character, if that makes sense. They're not doing it as a team. They're not thinking about coordinating their attacks. Um, and then when things start going south bad things escalate, right? Right. One of the things I love about Troy's adventures is that they encourage the party to think of itself as a party. Yeah. Um the very much that if you if you have players who know each other and they know each other's characters' strengths and weaknesses and how to adjust for that, um, or if they familiarize themselves with the P, the pre gens, they're gonna do well. If they just think, okay, I've got this cool ability, I'm going to run out here and use it, and then they then they get skewered, and then oh. their friends are freaking out, and then everybody's doing their own thing, it can end poorly for people. That's um, bleed over from my, my history of being a Navy submariner. Exactly. And it, it's one of those things that I, I think... it'll stri it's, it's, it's good. It might be a little tough on some 5e players... But it will strengthen their awareness of, you know, that that old old school camaraderie, the idea that you know you're part of a party. This is your group. This is your, these are your brothers and sisters. Um, it's not just about you; it's about them as well. And I really admire that about the work, Troy. It's fantastic. Thank you. It's part of it's part of uh, being a great DM and a great writer is to push them to the edge but rely on each other, right? Exactly. Yeah. So. I had one thing for foreshadowing the Ocean's Bounty to anybody who's going to get a chance to play it or, or run it. Um, there is a, a creepy shark man uh, race <laughs> throughout all of all of D&D. And, Jay, how do you pronounce it? What, bullet? The Sahagin? A Sahagwin. I do Sahagwin. Okay. Troy? Sahagin. Swagin. Anna, Anna Sahagwin, how do you pronounce it? Swagin, I think yeah, I think I go with that first, yeah. But on it's, the other hand, my language skills are, <laughs> come are on probably here. better than all of ours. No, but um, it, it's like yeah, I can't speak straight in any language, so that's the thing. I can speak a lot of them, but not really that well. So, and I'm not sure my aquatic elven is up to snuff. Yeah. And Samwise, how do you pronounce them? I, so I'm who again? I like. Wow, oh, he, wow! He goes completely off the end there. So. Of course. <laughs> he may have Armin, but that doesn't mean Kuntz was correct. 
Yeah. So, so yeah, I just I wanted to ask Morrison, everybody. So, so uh, yeah, that Sahagwin, that is the one foreshadowing I'll give people. I'm, the, yeah. I'm, I'm the furthest and, off, oh, like I always am. Sahagwin. That's how we always so, pronounce so, it. Sometime if we ever run into Steve Marsh, we can ask him, right? Yeah, well, yeah. according, so, according like, to yeah, Alvin, he says Sogwin is how the, Steve Marsh says it. So there you go. So like a female pig. Yes, yeah, yeah, sea devil is another way to say it, Tim, and, and save yourself. You're correct. Ever mysterious. All right. Let's get while we got time here. Let's go over these two. So oh, I think I say like you do, Jay. Never heard you so often. So I switched. <laughs> yes, because you know I don't hack up anything really. You know, uh, how did these two come about? Oh, someone want to tell us a story on minor threat because we have LA one and two, and now we have LA three and four. Where were they located? I'm I'm waiting for Josh to log in. He's already he's already on, isn't he? Oh, into here? Yeah, no. Nah. Um, basically, these were uh, scans of Len's original dot matrix uh, mo uh tournament modules that he ran at Gen Con 1982, uh, rounds four and or five and six. Wow, well, they're uh, old then. Yeah. Um, this one being round five and then threat from nowhere or the gift, uh, was round six. Uh, we got those scans courtesy of Alan Groey. So everybody high praise for Alan Groey. Please thank him. If you ever see him, go visit black blade publishing. Now it makes sense be. why he Support. wanted copies of each. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh. and I, I'll, I'll, talk to lee we'll we'll get some more done 82 gen con wow to us to help further and assist the lakofka archives efforts in acquiring additional stuff for the we're, future we're but, looking for barrier peaks now that secret barrier peaks one that was between gen con I, 13 and 15 13 I, and I got a lot of people already working on that okay okay <laughs> um but yeah so yeah we got the scans and you know, we went to work, uh, retyping it all up first. Uh, thanks for Balfrin for uh, devising a method of enlarging the dot matrix and then running OSR to oh, be able to really? pick it up. Nice. Doesn't quite catch everything, but it makes it a lot easier. Um, again, Dan Smith art. Right. In in the insides. Uh Thanks, you know, everybody was part of it. Again, Lee makes them all look beautiful. Uh, huh. Sorry. Uh, That's great, man. No. And we got, uh, you know, Les's team did a play test for one. DM Samuel did a play test for the other. Huh. Great support from the community. Uh I know LA one and two were received very well. Uh, didn't hear a report on these two, <clears throat> you Gary Khan people. Well, so but I assume everybody. We know that we them. know that uh, um, Wiley Hobbit ran at least one of them at Gary Khan. LA one he, and two. Yeah, he ran uh, lighthouse. the lighthouse. Yeah, good. yep, good. So and the uh, the Order of the Owl guys actually got. Uh, they got my printer's copies of LA3 and LA4, and they're supposed to be putting up uh, the games they run ran of that uh, onto their YouTube channel. So Nice. Yep. So hopefully we'll get to see some actual Gary Khan play footage from them. So, so the adventure spans two games. The party has an opportunity to regain spells, so this may be disrupted. There you go. So you actually allow them to rest. Wow. Where's that Greenwood? Not me. That's Len. I, I I know. That's what I'm saying. Len. <laughs> wow. So yeah, but he has a very nice mechanic on. Yeah, I see disrupting that. them. Of course he does. <laughs> of course he does. It's Just because the options there doesn't mean you get to take advantage of the option. So true. So this is in tournament style, correct? Yes. But you're gonna run it through as a normal adventure, but it's in tournament style. Cool. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's a cool piece of artwork. That's Dan Smith. Yeah. Oh, it looks like an ankeg to me. 
Nice ruins. Really cool. What level is this for? I see stuff in here that's really crazy. That's not an ant keg. It's not an ant keg. Oh. It's an ant lion. Oh, okay. Right there. Scroll back down. You just missed the level. Yeah. Four right to there. Eight. Four to eight. That's like a... Or four to six. It's like a Tomb of the Lizard King deal where it's like, wow, that's a lot of level spread. Yep. And you got the pre-gens in the back of this that carry over from this module and into the other one. It's sister module. Okay, so it's kind of like a, the G series or whatever. Where they have the, some of the same characters from G one, two, three. Got it. All right, cool. This looks like I, I, so. I know this is Len. This don't still look like six level characters for this. Uh, so this looks pretty nasty. And and right there, these are actual new creatures that Len Lakofka created. Yes, nineteen eighty two. Yes. So think about that. That never there made was, the light of day. There was no known artwork for them, so Dan read the description that Len wrote up about it, and this is what he created. Oh, that's awesome, man. And that as well was another new creature. Close and to it. Yeah. Slow hit die. It's close to a chasmy, but it looks like a mi mixture between a, a chasmy and a, and a sturge. It, yep. It's yeah. It's a very. It's a watered down. It's a watered down chasmy with basically the same bite as a, a sturge. Okay. So you're you're a spot on there. Great. And then uh, a new magic item, I guess, the demon seed, which has very yeah. Uh, <laughs> interesting effects <laughs> of what can come out of it. As long as you have to put it in any weird places. So, all right, oh, cool. The map is, uh, the ma map's done nicely. That's cool. What do you count? Yeah. Oh, wow, look at that. And that's to the final layer. Dan Smith underground artwork, right? I can tell yep. that. Yeah. All right. And there, Leonard Lukovka. Yep, man, it's, it was 2020. Holy yep. shit! Four years. Four years ago. Oh my god! Crazy. And I, I think at this point we actually have to start adding the the post uh, posthumous stuff to his uh, his bibliography. Uh, yeah, definitely. And, and yeah. you know, going that direction because uh, you know the. The amazing people with the Lakofka archive who've done, you know, like Alan and, and Troy and and Balfour who've done the the heavy lifting with this, uh, definitely uh, doing God's uh, work. Yes, yep, a truly yeoman job on this. It, it's the hard work that is just amazing to see at this point. Can can I can I go off on a minor tangent there's, here? Well, you there's a minor threat, so let's have a minor tangent. So so, I see Robert Hartley doing a short. And he's talking about how he's frustrated with the spell Tiny Hut. And I go, and I post on there very nicely, and I paraphrase it. It says, I'm more frustrated with, they call it Tiny Hut, not Liaman's Tiny Hut anymore. That's what I'm frustrated with. Yep. So, uh, yeah, um, the, the, you know, they're, 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 our friends are sterilizing, like, the, 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 all these legends that have done stuff. I mean, it, I mean the, the column was Liaman's Tiny Hut in Dragon, too, you know, so... There you go. My rant's over. I apologize. One one other thing I would like to say is yep. we the the opportunity was missed last year, but this year with the release of these two, whoever uh, I believe it's either got to be Josh, Anna, or UJ. These need to get put in for an any. Yes, for Len because they are eligible. Okay. And I believe it has to be one of you three since you guys are the executors of the Lakofka archive. Adam, you unquote. and I can talk about how that needs when's that need to be done by? I don't know the details. We have but... to look into it. It's yeah. Um, All right. It might be too late this year. We'll see. Yeah, we have I to don't look think into it. it. I haven't yeah, seen... until the end it's of the probably month. Probably not. End of this month. Yeah. Uh oh. Okay. okay, then we need to do it quickly. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can all talk together and, and get that done. All right, so this is the second part. Uh, well, this is part seven, right, of the tournament. Is that correct? Uh, part uh, six. Parts, this is part six, round four, six. Okay. 
Yeah. Minor threat was round five. Got it. Right. Correct. So. Oh. And it and it carries it carries on with the story. So. Okay. With the it has some of the same NPCs. You got the same uh, pre gens that carry over into this. Huh. And basically, this is about traveling, traveling through and acquiring the three pieces for that jackal mask or Anubis mask that's on the front cover. Okay. Wait, so it's not a greyhound mask? <laughs> hey, if you want it to be a greyhound mask, it can be a greyhound mask. All right. <laughs> So this woman here looks seriously disturbed, and it really freaks me out. She is. <laughs> Spoiler alert! Sorry, people. Yeah, she. <laughs> it's like I don't want to hug you, Troy. She's one of those people who, when you see them, their 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 face and their gestures are a spoiler alert. So yeah, it's all good, man. Run away! Another new monster from Len Lakofka. What this? The sand spiders. Sand spiders. Yep. Okay. And they're in the back. Cool. Well, it sounds right up my alley for those. I just got to throw out there, too. Uh, man, Len blessing us posthumously with new monsters is a glorious, glorious thing. Yeah, I'll say. I mean, the adventures okay. themselves are great, but I do so love having more monsters always. And when they come, when it's from someone from those original days as the you know the old school before there was a renaissance yep for a special hero point to assign to whoever you want tomorrow including me what well-known adventure it's on my wall of fame is there a hierarchy sphinx mount in the beginning of the adventure No one. What's Lord Fourth? I don't know what that. What's that mean? Is that I one? Nope. Yeah, it's kind of in the beginning. So, Baltrin's Beacon. Ah. Yeah, Baltrin's Beacon. Uh, you'll see if you know in the beginning the gang. It's there, and it's the evil fighter, and that's his mount. Yeah. So it's not a desert series one. Nope. It's about to speak in, which I almost ran at Gary Con uh, at Founders of Legends until Gary Holen convinced me to run Tharazin, and instead I'm glad I did because we wouldn't have Fritz Winchester stories now like we do. Yeah. So, and great picks from my good friend Todd Stashwick. Sorry, just kidding. Wow, this is cool. I mean, the artwork's unbelievable. Like, I knew exactly that that was a higher coast sphinx just from that picture, and that's hard to do. You know, that's hard to do. Yeah, basically that whole process is once the writing was done, uh, then I give it to Dan, and he just he just has that skill, man. He'll read through the module and then he'll pick what jumps out at him, what he thinks is going to be, you know, the good things to create art for the module. And I don't I don't restrain him. I don't confine him. To me, in my experience, it's best to let the artist. There you go. You know, do his thing or her thing, and you get the best results that way. So sets the sets the antithesis in this, right? The deity set. Uh, no, he's not the antithesis. No, I mean, uh, he, okay, he's mentioning it. That guy is the. Oh, okay. Uh, is this the final part of the adventure? Like they, are yeah. Quit showing it. You're spoiling it. Oh, oh my god, god Jay. dude! I'm just scrolling through, man. <laughs> Jeez. There's your new monster, right. Sand Spider. Incidentally, you know, five hit die. Blah. Are they poisonous? Special attacks. Nope. But look at what they can do. Oh. Especially as a group of them. Oh. Ah. Sandstorm. That's crazy. Len, Len was very Not thoughtful evil. when creating those. Yeah, thoughtful is another word for uh, Tim-like. Crazy. Right, think outside the box and hor horrifyingly maim everyone with these crazy effects that they had never see coming, which is kind of a cool way to do it. 
Very, uh, very minimalist on the map, which is cool. As that's probably what Len gave you guys. Oh, look, contour lines, Anna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a it's a Len adventure. <laughs> uh, have to have yep. contour lines. I, I, I am true to Len's map. Yes. Yes, Len loved contour good. lines. Mm -hmm. In in recreating anything of his, I yeah. I try to keep it exactly the same. We have to have uh, long stat blocks of everything and 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 contour lines. <laughs> can, can, can can someone link all where all the modules are for Patrick so he can download all four, please? All right, uh, th that's a good map too. LA three and LA four are not available for download yet. Canadian yeah. Ancient Gamer, they will be once some minor tweaks are done. Oh, so I thought they were on Anna's site. So I thought mm -hmm. they were still on Anna's site. No, three, three, and four have not been put up anywhere. Oh, so. okay. Nope, not yet. Okay, well there you go. So you're gonna have to wait for three and four. Uh, I also have some that I've been using as uh, I, I have an extra set besides mine. So I'm gonna flaunt it in front of all you guys too because I feel like <laughs> it, right? But I have another set um, for for a uh, virtual uh, for this fundraiser for next year as a, as a giveaway. So. Wow, what great work. And that's just why I was so proud of the community when we did the Greyhawk um, one, Anna, you know? Mm -hmm. I was really so proud of them all. Everyone they just did a wonderful, wonderful job uh, with with all with all the publications. Um, what, uh, so uh, as we're, I know we're running up on time. I know probably some of you have to go. Uh, what uh, what would you like? What would you all like to say? Uh, you know, uh, as a synopsis to everything that you've done here, who wants to who wants to start? Because you guys have done some wonderful work, and tell Norker that too, and everyone else who contributed. So I appreciate it. Who wants to kick this off? Sam, you go first. All right. Well, I will note um, we're finishing up the editing for three. And hopefully we'll be passing that to Lee or already pass it to Lee. You have to ask Nor Nor uh, Norker. Uh, with the number of submissions where we've already started editing for, we have a rather, rather aggressive policy of editing stuff as soon as we get it. And then we try to build up more so we can make sure we fill an issue in case we come up with delays on any project. But there's a lot of work still on four. I'm haranguing Norker for another one of my new Canon projects to go with the... Uh, the peoples and cultures of the Flanais. Uh, the next one is going to be my cosmogony. And hopefully we'll have that out. And then four, and you know, we'll see. You know, we, we don't have a time frame, but you know, we, we don't have a schedule. We're not sit, you know, doing a set schedule, but we're working on everything and we hope to have lots more for everybody. Norker gave me a schedule because he's like, Can you make sure you get out Ed C Lacra one for oh. you know for, for four for the autumn? I'm like, Yes. So I thought it was well, yeah. I thought it was autumn. Is that correct? Tick, tick tock, Jay. Oh, yeah, well, I know, gonna... I know. I got the whip. I got the whip. It's all. It's all. We like to make sure we have yep. stuff so we can send it to Lee in a timely fashion. Okay. And you know, not suddenly. Oh, here, Lee. Can you uh, have this finished by tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. Because we all got real lives and r real jobs. And, yeah. And the places yeah. we need, you know, and the places and things and stuff like that. So. And you know, if it comes to it, you know, this is sort of my thing. That, we wind up like, you know, actual magazines, we have like a full issue or two in the can already. That way, if, if life really decides to mess with us, you know what? We've got some content for people for some time forward. Right. So we, we keep working, we keep doing more stuff. And, you know, we want all our, we want people to keep contributing. So we want to get stuff out. We don't want to sit on their stuff forever. We, uh, we want to, you know, submit and hopefully we can get it out in you know, several months. <laughs> you guys have been uh, cranking it out, so uh, oh, and, and no you know, doubt that you're going to if, continue. If anyone has submissions, you know, keep sending them in. We need more stuff for four. We'll need stuff for five. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm going more for little pieces now to, in, instead of my big ones because Norker is uh, doing the, the new canon <laughs> uh, collection. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, yeah, we want to keep doing more for everybody. Well, I appreciate it. I really do. You guys are doing fantastic, fantastic work. And I appreciate you coming on tonight, Santa. Thank you so very <laughs> much. Who wants to go next? <laughs> I'll go next. Go for it, Les. Um, yeah, I was going to, I'm going to suggest 
a little something here where I think, uh, you know, Jay, again, that article would not have come to being without your asking me for uh, some lore. And I, I, I want to propose something here. I'll offer a little challenge to folk. I know that there are some DMs who are watching this who run streaming games. Mm -hmm. And for a little gotcha. something that's outside of your usual um, set of uh, player expectations, right? Throw a little, your players a little curveball. Approach, you can approach somebody um, and say, either write up something for the journal that you use, right? That you think people might be interested in. Or you could approach somebody and say, hey, um, do you know anything about this aspect of Greyhawk? Especially if you're a new Greyhawk DM. Ask so someone who knows something to invent something for you. And then it could be published in one of these journals. And that, that way, people get to see the stuff actually getting used. They get ideas about how they might use it in their own campaign. Um, and it can be carried on that way. I mean, it becomes, a live, again, that li idea of a living kind of experience where stuff isn't simply produced over here. You know, it's not just we're producing streams here. We're producing yeah. text here. It becomes a thing where the community itself is generating texts which are being used in play, on streams, which are then being used in home games. Um, and it, cre it creates a, this kind of ecosystem. <sighs> For Greyhawk material, in which the, in which Greyhawk can continue to thrive, um, so that would be my kind of, if you will, challenge or recommendation for people. Um, try doing that, or cr generate your own stuff from your campaign and offer it up to the Grimoire or Divisions, or to any of the other number of publications. Um, the other thing I'll, I'll mention is that uh, Troy's already mentioned it on his uh, schedule of upcoming projects, so. I don't feel remiss in mentioning that, or I don't feel bad about mentioning that he and I are going to be working on some things together. Um, Fantastic. I didn't and, mention uh, that. I, you mentioned that you have an unspecified project, and I'll go ahead and say that. I'm, There's I a couple have, of them on there. There yeah. are a couple. Yeah, there is. <laughs> there is. One that's and on hold. So, so some of my time is going to so. be uh, eaten by uh, something Troy and I are, are cooking up Good. in the kitchen. Um, so I've got that going on. I've also got some stuff that I had been tended for issue three of the grimoire, but circumstances, unfortunately, and scheduling conflicts delayed that. So I should have that done hopefully in time for uh, the fall issue of the grimoire. And, uh, I've got, uh, some other projects that I might, might be working on if they, if things come to, uh, fruition. And, uh, yeah, I just want to say that I really love this community and i love the way that, again that people take inspiration from other people's material and that we are in fact not just generating a community but creating an ecosystem for uh for our creations and for the creations that have come before us so yeah that would be my all i have to say really so Les, if you want if you want some good news off that it sure got noticed at gary Khan this year good good yeah when everyone's like, "Oh my gosh, you're you know you're you're with that community." It, it, there was the, the amount of people we had there. I got some good feedback from someone who never gives me a, 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 a positive reinforcement ever, Josh. So nice. Uh, sorry, Josh. But, <laughs> yeah. And the other other thing yeah, I want so. to point out too is that when for for people who produce Absolutely stuff, good. right? It's like be it's almost like being a voice in the wilderness at times when you crank out stuff, um, and it's published in a zine or it's published wherever. Because it's really good to hear back. I mean, that's one of the great things about playtesting material, right? Is okay. you've written something, but then you get to actually hear how it plays. Um, and yep. how it plays for an audience beyond your table. And so, yeah, I mean, that's one of the things, again, it's great, is the idea that the writers that way feel that their material um, is having an impact. And also it allows them to refine their talent as designers and as writers, if that makes sense. It does. It does. 100%. So, and I think that basically creating a generate a new generation or a next gen of Greyhawk creatives who are designers, writers, artists, and having them refine their work in that kind of furnace, in that furnace of play testing and production, that is another great way to help advance Greyhawk to do 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 justice to what was before and to carry it forward. 
and, so. and also to pull in some more small streams. Exactly. And then we pulled in a couple more recently, like Folk and Myth and BBG. Um, we need to pull in more. I, and that doesn't mean that that's all the content they're going to do, but we need to pull in more streams. Uh, just just to connect that loop. So well, less... even, if, even if even if someone just runs one Greyhawk game or a couple of Greyhawk games, that's still more people getting exposed to Greyhawk. Absolutely. So we got to keep it rolling. So that's great points, and I really uh, appreciate it and appreciate you coming on tonight. Thank you so very much. Hey, thank you for having me, Lee. Um. Well, I will actually very much go through and echo what what Les was saying about you know, building a, a cohesive, um, I don't want to use something like multi-channel or, or day job uh, words, but, you know, we, we're basically at the point where we have, uh, uh, we have such a great community with so much talent, ranging from designers to artists to writers to editors to video and uh, sound people um, and Josh. But, uh, <laughs> you know, we, Zing. we, 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 we very much have the, the group of, of people who can uplift each other's content and, you know, really, really build some, uh, some awesome community inroads and, and really help build each other up and showcase each other's work. Uh, whether it's, hey, you wrote a zine article, um, you know, that's awesome. How can we help? What's your next thing? Um, to, you know, Samwise, who has written a couple of encyclopedias uh, worth of stuff, which does terrify me a little bit, but that's okay. Um, you know, uh, and and how can we lift up, you know, the 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 new canon, so to speak, and, and what we can do to to help share, um, you know, Greyhawk uh, things that are stolen from Mistara that uh, Greyhawk took, um, you know, things <laughs> like that. Um, like X one. So I, yeah, um, I, I, I definitely want to toss that out there. Become involved, join some of the discords. Um, you know, things don't stop with, uh, you know, the end of the stream. Uh, you know, there, there's Can of Fire, there's the Great Guild Hall. Um, there, there's, uh, you know, quite a few communities out there. Uh, same with the conventions. Um, you know, hey, come to Gary Con, run one Greyhawk thing. Um, I prefer the term stolen, uh, GDTRFB, uh, 1995. Um, but yeah, Greyhawk fans is a whole state bar. So, uh, thank you all very much for having me on tonight. Lee, thank you. And like I said, really appreciate all the support. And, uh, well, without you, the Altamir book doesn't look anywhere near as good as it sh is that. And <laughs> Lee is uh, amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. Good next, uh, Troy. Yeah, I want to thank everybody for their support uh, in helping with all these projects uh, and supporting all these projects. All the comments from, you know, their own J streams to the forums that, that we get, you know, that's motivation. Um, if you didn't get a chance to check it out, uh, one of Jay's Greyhawk streams, Ed, gave, Ed Greenwood gave a little speech. Yep. Basically, get off your butts and do something. If you got it in there and you're sitting on it, just do it. Time, time is too short to not. If we have plenty of people in the community that will help, you know, make it look better, make it sound better, right? Get it out there. Get those submissions out to people. Uh because you never tomorrow is not promised. Yeah. You know the uh the other thing, you know, I I'd, I'd like to say, you know, is, you know, with the passing of Jim Ward, um yes. You know, a loss of an icon in this huge, you know, the gaming community. If you have a chance, find a way get to a con and see these people if they interest you get you know meet up they love to talk they like to talk their stories about the past you know their experiences and and help you know mentor slash influence the next generation generations that will hopefully continue to make products for the community for gamers by gamers uh you know 
I I I had to miss Gary Con this year. I had tickets and I was planning to go. I had some health issues come up. I'm still dealing with them. I really wanted to talk to Jim Ward. You know, Jay had him on his stream. I wanted to talk to him about Dromage because Dromage has an underwater tower in the Azure Sea. And I, I my yeah. first most love is the underwater world. And I, I, you know, I wanted to talk to him about that. And now I can't. Yeah. You know, so if you have dreams, aspirations, get off, quit sitting on the couch, get up. And get your ass to work. That's my whip crack for everybody. Two follow-ups to Troy's great messenger. The Ed the Ed one was Founders and Legends Gabin. Not the second Gabin where I had 40 guests. The first Gabin where Kurt was on, and that was during Founders and Legends. That was a, I want to say a Sunday night one. That, uh, that And I know it's on YouTube and still on Twitch. That's the one where he says that at the end. Secondly, um, if you want to meet people, North Texas Con. Game hole, yep. and then page next January before Gary Con. Three opportunities that we know a lot of these people are going to be at. So just giving you some, uh, giving you some heads up as to when you can meet meet some people. I know a lot of us here are going to be at page next year. A lot of people in chat and and Troy, myself, Anna, uh, Alex, Antiquitous, and uh, you know, uh, Lee, you're going to go. You're going to go to page. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna head out there. Uh... That's awesome. awesome. I used to always go out for Historicon. Oh, but, yeah. Um, really? I didn't know that. I was, so we, you were probably, yes. you and I were probably there at the same time. I didn't even realize it. Yeah, I played Can't Napoleonics and then switched over to uh, uh, Flames of War towards the end. Oh, wow. Cool. I totally lost interest. Uh, so. Did you do Lancaster yeah. or King of Prussia or both? I did King of Prussia as a whole. Okay. All right. Cool. So. Nice. Um Anna, what do you have to say about all this and uh, what you want to shout I, out? Just first, thank you all guys for such awesome work on, on getting all this done. It's amazing. And th and congratulations, Troy, for, for getting your website up and running. It looks great. Now I need to, meaning my, mine has been up for 10 years. <laughs> so I need to definitely shape up <laughs> here to, to get it. And I have a website update lined up here. So, so yeah, it's Mike, definitely going to happen. Um, yeah, and thank you, Sam and Leave. Yeah, and unless it's it's just awesome so much, and also to Norker for all the stuff he put together stuff here and and yeah, and, Norker deserves an ass load of credit. Exactly. I mean, it's just yeah, so yeah, much stuff. can be on. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm, yep. And and everybody else. There were so many other authors and stuff that that submitted yes. text and stuff to it. That that so thank you guys. This is awesome. So I I. I stuff to read for days now so so it's so cool and when it comes to to updates uh, first of all i cleaned up the the uh, uh, lens old map L lendor isle maps and and the old greyhawk map and the, we clean up i'm, I'm adjusting the the uh, exposure and stuff so they'd be good and i also have a margin because they were too big to scan so i had to put them down on a on a a piece of plywood uh, and and put them out in natural light and and use reflections and stuff to get as good light as possible and a tripod with my DSLR. So there. So what I did there is one version with the no cleanup on the outside whatsoever. So you can make sure that I haven't removed anything. And it's also one with a back white background if you want to have a a simple one, so to speak, that you can also mask if you want to. So so they will be available very shortly. And also the um, there is a bunch of other scans and stuff of PDFs and things. There's a couple of them I want to send to the original authors because I want to make sure that it was not something sent to to Len in in um, in confidence, so to speak, or, or something. But I, since he's passed away, so I don't think it shouldn't be a problem. But there's a couple of them I just want to send out. Then I can bump them all together, put them in a zip file, and and send them to well, put them on my website so everybody can download them. And then you're on you're on Friday night. Yes, I'm on Friday night as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hopefully right. Linda too. I haven't confirmed yet, but hopefully Linda as well. And thank you everybody who came by yesterday and and, oh, yeah, and listened to my my uh, babbling two hours on Greyhawk maps and stuff. So so oh, so that was it. a lot of people there and asked a lot of cool questions and stuff. So so yep. 
so it's it's um, coming out working on uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff but I'll, I'll talk about that more on Friday and and there will be more more things coming out so I'm I'm starting to catch up with all the stuff that I should have done by now after Gary Con. so I'm slowly getting there and so, uh, I I was just gonna throw throw out and this your streams I missed last night I cursed myself for it your streams with with Linda are always great and Thank you. I just want to say in terms of the, the kind of stuff that you and, and Linda create as well, all this is the thing that gets lost, right? We live in an era where increasingly we talk about content and we talk about product. We don't talk about creation and we don't talk about art and we don't talk about the artists, the people who pour themselves into these works yeah. out of passion. Um, you know, stuff is done by the by corporate staff um at times rather than than people who you know there's not necessarily it's cleaned up and commodified and, and packaged without that beating bleeding heart and one of the things that i love about you guys and, and i love this about you and, and linda is again that passion and that beating bleeding heart thank you um, yeah it's it's so yeah i just love to to do it and what i do i definitely don't see it as a product I see it as a raw material that the community can use to to exactly. refine it's and a living to, thing. To, yeah. exactly to 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 as a raw material to a resource for the Greyhawk community yeah. and all the Greyhawk gamers to to tweak and use forward, so to speak. That in the future, that's that's what I want to do. I want I want to make like cartography. It will be like like have a, a repository of real world maps you can use for your mapping project if you want to map the real world. I want to do the same thing for Greyhawk. Very cool. Thank you for it. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I'm so happy to, to to keep doing it. So, yep. So I'm going to go as fast as I can. Everyone knows I I got a ton of great follow-ups from Gary Khan. Interviews, uh, adventures, uh, special DMs on the channel. I started doing shorts. If you know, the first ones came out. I, one won't upload to Instagram, so I got three on YouTube that I did today. Starting that up, I'm trying to reach out to more. I, I don't know if I'm doing TikTok. I, I don't think I am, but I'm going I'm to do uh, YouTube and Instagram. Uh, but here, they might ban TikTok before we get. Yeah, there, I don't so want to get. I don't want to get in that. <laughs> so uh, notice, uh, I'm getting better too with uh, pictures. So as you can see, this is an assault on the. Uh, this is uh, tomorrow's adventure. Uh, number 1039 as we mm -hmm. finish up overreach. Uh, so as you can see, I'm getting really good on, on blow-ups on, uh, you know, close with bugbears on the other side and, and <laughs> most of the player characters on the outside mm -hmm. looking in. So uh, that is tomorrow. Uh, we finish up uh, number, and that's a Reaper miniature giveaway tomorrow night. All right. And uh, that's Norwell Headhunters overreach. Then Saturday morning, uh, first uh, special coming out after Gary Khan. I got Bird, Coco Bunny, Dave from Guild Superior and Korg the Mighty and Nuclear Meat and the Order is Calling. What happens to a group when you get the attention of higher-ups as do-gooders? You need to do more good, or at least you're offered to do more good. So we're going to see what happens uh, in this one. Saturday morning, 9 a.m. for this. Sorry it's early, but I, I'm going to get this all in 9 to 1 on Saturday. Uh, that's the first of, uh, of the specials Sunday night. It is back as we talked I think this is the right button for Ed, is it? No, that's two weeks out, so I hit the wrong one. That's this Gabin. All right. Yep, Ed Greenwood, um, uh, Adam and I, we're going to do factions and organizations of Greyhawk in the Realms. No, I just make up a topic and Ed just talks, right? Oh, so yeah, I, exactly. I, you know, so we, we can, uh, we so can get a little yeah. bit in here and there. So, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Every new group needs a sponsor. Well, Chris, that's the way it works in my world. The, your name group, and if you get the attention of someone – it's politics in my game, especially in Altamira, and yeah, and they're all good aligned characters, so you know where that's going. And also, they're relatives of certain players. You'll see Saturday morning, you'll be like, oh my gosh, yeah, I'm bringing out the big guns. So this is Sunday. This is going to be fun. Uh, mm -hmm. it'll, be a fun it'll be a fun discussion. Now, some other specials. Next Saturday, our first in a series of special DMs. William Henry Dvorak's first one outside of the Ever Mysterious Tim on my channel. Um, was Secrets of the Rushmore, so he's using his Willow Isle reference. It's it's Ashley Minnesota Muse, the Ever Mysterious Tim, Antiquitous, and myself playing 5e. Bye. All halflings. So there you go. I'm playing a 5e halfling guardian, um, and we'll we'll have fun with that. So that's the first, and then more coming 
as I'm going way outside the barrier with uh, uh, with uh, with Curtis on the 27th, uh, and that is we're going to have a champion superheroes game. So why not, right? It's my channel. I can do what I want. Like <laughs> 10 a.m. Saturday morning. Uh, yeah, we'll have we'll have fun with that. Now I also should have Keith Baker on either 21st or 28th of April to talk about his Glim board game and his accomplishments with D&D. So I don't have a specific date. Yeah, and I am playing. Yes, I'm playing uh, Rockets Red Glare. Or is that who I'm playing? <laughs> 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 yes. Yeah, Keith Baker will be on too. And then on the 20th, I may have a Battletech game on the morning, Saturday morning on the 20th. So much going on. All right, that's enough to babble. April's full. There'll be a lot more. So uh, let's do the giveaways. All right, last call, exclamation point, drawing. Uh, it'll be something like that. There'll be a lot of Eberron talk, and also his, he's pushing his new board game, Glim, that I, I streamed and played in at GaryCon. You know, the Kickstarter will be starting up right right around that point. Here we go. First winner, Lucitio. Second winner, uh, Max Saxon, Retro Gamer. There we go. All right, thanks, of course. Thank you all. I'm going to, because uh, because uh, Garner was uh, nosing around earlier on, I'm going to raid into Gary Con Live. He's playing on that channel. So I'm going to raid into them tonight. I did Bones last week, so I'll do Gary Con Live this week. So, all right. Well, thank you all. That was great. Sorry we went a little long. A lot of it's my fault from the video issue. Not not knowing how, how I don't know how I changed the codec uh, thing. Who knows, right? So, you hit uh, the wrong button. No, well, it's so deeply embedded, Troy. I just don't know how that happened. <coughs> it's way, it's way deep. It's a multiple layer after layer. So we're gonna raid in. Uh, please sit tight, and uh, we'll see you all tomorrow night, seven thirty. Then Saturday morning at nine. Then Sunday evening at seven. Uh, full and as on Friday. So just stream every night starting this night through through Sunday to watch. All right, we'll see you all. Um, now maybe I'll hit a wrong button here. Uh oh, wrong uh, button. <laughs> no, woo. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. All right, send the raid up. Anna, one thing you got to raid in more on your on yours. Oh yeah, I need to figure out how. I've only seen this. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I gotta help you with that. What's the video? Yep. Yeah, I, I gotta I gotta help you with that. Just need to. It's finding that that their real names. That's the problem. And emo. Yeah. Anna, get some emo. They got starting for an artist. Put, put some heraldry up or something as an emo. Yeah, okay. I do that all the time. I, I have that for my cheer, my cheering. Says, uh, my cheering. My yeah, cheering. I just put up the word Mastrine. Five, yeah. four, three, two, one. See you tomorrow night. Thanks. Yeah, I, I got uh, I got heraldry up in, on mine uh, for you know. Um, yeah. Troy's got almost all of them, but one, I think. Right, Troy? I think yeah, uh, Patrick's slightly close. ahead of you. Yeah. I just yeah, added. Pat Patrick has them all. I'm yeah, I just added him a shrine though for no another hundred thousand out. So, yeah, but you know, I just didn't. That, that's that's way off. So, all right, let me let me exit this.